I'd like to have my baby in my hometown. You're in the way, sis, so could you please leave soon? One day when I returned from work, my sister who had gotten married and moved out years ago was in my room. She was ostentatiously rubbing her swollen belly, but I couldn't say anything. Even seeing her like that, looking around the room in shock, I stood still and she laughed at me crudely. You're just in the way since you can't even get a boyfriend, an old maid like you. Be grateful I threw away everything that was in the room to make it easier for you to leave. My room, which was normal before I left for work in the morning, was now completely empty. The bed, table, rug, and even the curtains were gone. Literally, there was nothing left. The only thing there was my sister standing defiantly in the center of the room. Your phone and wallet are in your commuter bag, right? So you won't die destitute. And it's about time you stop leeching off our parents and start living on your own. Yeah, I didn't think about getting my things back or kicking my sister out. I just didn't want to see her face anymore and wanted to leave. That was all. When I turned my back, I could hear my sister burst out laughing, as if she couldn't hold it in any longer. You can't say anything back, even when it's come to this. Aren't you too weak, sis? Ignoring her blatant mockery, I continued down the hallway. My father was on the phone in the living room, and my mother was probably preparing dinner with the sound of my father's cheerful voice and my mother's humming behind me. I walked out the front door, taking in the night air. I readjusted my bag on my shoulder and headed towards the street where there are many hotels along the way. I suddenly realized something. I thought, I wonder who is going to pay the mortgage on this house from now on. Well, never mind. I am Julia, a 27-year-old office worker. I work as a company employee and also have a side job. While I lead a stable life as a company employee, I enjoy doing what I love through my side job, such as video editing, web writing, and blog management. A 27-year-old office worker is what people would call old enough to be conscious of marriage, but I am not so conscious of love and marriage. Part of the reason is that my sister was treated like a princess at home, making me feel alienated by my family, which has prevented me from really wanting to build a happy family of my own. I have always lived with my parents at home. The household chores are supposed to be shared with my mother, but in reality, I do most of them. My mother, after coming back from her part-time job, is too tired, and seeing her like that makes me think, I should be the one to do the chores. Since becoming a working adult, I have been contributing to the household expenses, which is several times more than what my friends who live alone in Tokyo pay. I am an indoor person who likes studying and didn't go out much, even during my student days. So I didn't have much desire for material things and ended up saving most of the money I earned. Even after starting work, I didn't go out much, so I gave more for the household expenses, thinking it would help my parents. Furthermore, since last year, I've been contributing towards the mortgage payments at the request of my parents. My parents seem to think it's fine for me to contribute more to the household and mortgage payments, since I earn a steady income and am responsible. However, I feel they are not very interested in me because their attention has always been on my sister, Kristen, who is a year younger than me. Kristen is outgoing and very active. She would always go out somewhere on weekends during her student days. My parents naturally thought her lifestyle required money, so even when she lived at home, they never asked her for contributions towards the mortgage or household expenses. It seems my parents have been conditioned to think that I, the older sister, am low maintenance while my sister requires more attention. A while ago, my sister moved out to live on her own. Her workplace wasn't far from our parents' home, and when I asked her why she decided to live alone, she said, I mean, I wanted to try living by myself. I want to go out at night and be able to invite my boyfriend over. The answer I had imagined was far from reality. 
I thought it was about wanting to make things easier for my parents or wanting to become independent. On the other hand, I had no intention of leaving my parents' house and thought it was natural to help each other out since we are a family living together, even if it meant contributing a bit more to the living expenses. Then after a while, when I went back home, my sister was waiting for me. Welcome back, sis. I'm getting married, and I will have a dinner party so both families can meet each other. Can you come to the party? She mentioned the party would be at a long-established restaurant in L.A., and said, make sure you wear proper clothes, not your usual plain ones. Otherwise, I'll be the one laughed at. Even though she said that, I don't own any fancy clothes. I decided to attend in my usual suit. After all, this is the most respectful attire. I have my sister's fiance seemed sincere and was a very nice young man. He gave a very good impression when he said, Nice to meet you, sister-in-law. I look forward to getting along. I thought she had chosen a very good partner for herself. Perhaps with him, my sister might settle down a bit, I thought in a sisterly manner. Initially, the atmosphere was formal and tense between both families. But as alcohol was served, the formal tension gradually eased, and the conversation shifted to talking about children after marriage. Our eldest daughter, Julia, is almost 30 and still unmarried, without any plans to marry. So it looks like we'll only be able to see grandchildren from our younger daughter, Kristen. We're looking forward to it so much, my parents said. I want to have children right after getting married, maybe three, she said, and the conversation became lively. Suddenly, I noticed my sister's husband had a forced smile, looking uncomfortable, as if the cheerful smile earlier was a lie. I felt he was also uncomfortable, just like me. I wished it would end soon. Since then, my parents started doting on my sister as an investment for their first grandchild. Whenever my sister said, eating this food is said to make it easier to get pregnant, they would immediately go buy it and tell Kristen to eat a lot. There might be a chance I can't get pregnant because of tight clothes, she said one day, and they went to a department store to buy a dress. If you visit this church, you'll be blessed with children, they said, and they even went on a trip together. My parents doing whatever my sister said was usual for me, so I didn't think much of it other than their doing their usual thing. However, one day my sister made a sarcastic remark to me because you won't get married or make an effort to show a grandchild's face. I have to go through all this trouble. Must be nice being carefree and single. Aren't you planning to get married and move out soon? Ah, but with that plain face of yours, no man would come near you. You need a bit more sex appeal. Should I teach you how to do your makeup? She laughed. I was irritated by her words but I knew arguing back would only lead to a hysterical fight and make things worse, so I chose to say nothing. My sister has always been confident that she is more loved by our parents than I am, and she often speaks to me in a strong tone. One day, my sister got pregnant. Even someone like her could be visited by the stork, I wondered. If she could truly become a mother, I thought of her husband. Maybe it'll be fine with him, my sister said. Since I'm pregnant, I don't want to cause trouble at work, and I want to focus on parenting and easily quit her job. However, her husband thought that parenting would be expensive, and being a full-time homemaker wasn't realistic on his salary. But my sister didn't listen to him and quit her job anyway. One day, when I returned from work, my room's door was slightly open. About four inches. I'm meticulous, so I never leave closets or drawers open, let alone the door. My parents wouldn't have entered to clean since I do all the cleaning myself. Nervously, I opened the door to my room and was shocked. There was nothing there. I wasn't one to have a lot of belongings, but I had kept things precious to me since childhood in storage boxes, labeled and stored in the closet. 
Gone were the electronic dictionary my parents bought me for my 10th birthday. The commuter pass case my grandparents gave me as a high school entrance gift. My diplomas, trophies, albums, even though they were old and worn out, they were precious to me. Everything that should have been there by morning had disappeared without a trace. Standing dazed in the empty room, I heard a familiar voice from behind. Oh, you're back, sis. I've decided to come home for my childbirth. Looking at my sister's face as she spoke with a laugh, I immediately knew she must have moved my things. Kristen, where did you put my stuff in the closet? I asked in a panic, but my sister, still laughing, said, What's the rush? It wasn't anything important, right? Just junk. Being told my precious belongings were junk, anger welled up inside me. It might be junk to you, but it's important to me. Give it back now. It's insane to move all someone's belongings out when they're not home. It must have been the first time she saw me raise my voice. Surprised, she blurted out, I've already thrown it away. In my 27 years of life, I've never been this angry. It's outrageous to throw away someone's belongings without permission. Put everything back right now. I demanded, but my sister unapologetically said, it's already been taken by the garbage truck. I can't give them back. She looked at me with disdain as she said this, then added, what's the big deal? You're getting so angry over some junk. Are you crazy? Don't yell like that. It's bad for the baby, while ostentatiously rubbing her belly. And then she continued, I've decided to live here even after the baby is born. It seems tough after childbirth, and mom and dad want to see their grandchild every day. Matt plans to stay here too, so it's too small with just my room. That's why I decided to use your room too. You understand, right? You're such a filial piety failure. I was utterly astounded by her selfish behavior. Going to a parent's home for childbirth is supposed to be a temporary return before and after the birth. But living here with her husband and child is simply cohabitation, isn't it? And then to unilaterally label someone as a failure in filial piety. My anger bubbled up. Do you even realize you're being a failure in filial piety staying at home without getting married? And as the eldest daughter, not even bringing in a son-in-law. I'll show them a grandchild's face and create a life where we can live together and see each other every day. Who do you think is doing more for our parents? She was unilaterally declaring as if it was all my fault. But there was no way I could just sit back and listen to her. If you want to live in this house as a family, that's something the whole family should discuss. Especially since you want to use my room, you should have said something sooner if you had a set date. At that point, my sister interrupted by banging loudly on my room's door. Shut up. See, you're always like this, making a fuss. That's why I made it so you have no choice but to leave. It's annoying. That sounded like mere lashing out. Trying to use someone's room without permission and having thrown out the current resident's belongings. Yet she spoke as if she were the victim. Kristen banged on the door over and over again. You're in the way. Leave, don't ever come back. I was beyond flabbergasted. Then as you wish, I'll just leave. I don't have any belongings left. No need to pack. My immense anger had now turned into sheer astonishment. I even felt like I never wanted to see her again. I turned around and headed straight for the entrance. My parents didn't seem to notice me just returning and immediately leaving through the front door. My father was probably bragging on the phone to a relative about his pregnant daughter coming home to live with them permanently. My mother seemed to be in the kitchen, possibly making my sister's favorite dish, humming a tune. I wasn't living with my family expecting anything in return. The difference in how my sister and I were treated since childhood. I thought it was because she was good at charming our parents, and that was okay. 
But even after growing up and taking on most of the household responsibilities, this was how I was treated. Despite allocating most of my salary to living expenses and the house's mortgage, and yet my sister, who never contributed a penny, was welcomed with open arms. The negative aspects of my parents I had tried not to see combined with my sister's behavior morphed into contempt. Without saying I'm leaving or goodbye, I opened the front door. Until that door closed, neither my parents nor my sister said anything to me. Then a week later, at the end of the month, which was payday, I usually would transfer living expenses and the mortgage payment to my father's account. But I didn't make the deposit. Since I don't live there anymore, I don't see why I should pay the mortgage for a house I'm not living in. The housing mortgage was originally taken out by my father, so it was supposed to be planned in such a way that he could repay it comfortably from his income. The household shouldn't become unsustainable just because I stopped making deposits. However, a little while later, I got a call from my mother. Right off the bat, she said, Julia, we've received a notice for unpaid mortgage. When I checked, there was no money in your father's account. She rattled on before I could even answer, clearly in a panic. Julia, do you know why this happened? Don't tell me you withdrew it. In contrast to her frantic tone, I answered calmly. All I did was stop making deposits. I didn't withdraw anything. If there's an unpaid mortgage, it means the withdrawal couldn't be made, right? Did you make sure there was enough balance on the withdrawal date? You didn't make a deposit. Why? She sounded genuinely puzzled, so I became just as confused. Because it was agreed that I'd contribute to the living expenses and the mortgage since I was living at home. Once I left, I obviously wouldn't continue to pay, right? I don't live there anymore. It seemed to finally dawn on her as I heard her gasp softly. So you don't need to pay the living expenses. You're right. But could you still contribute to the mortgage, even living on your own? You should have some leeway, right? Sorry, but I can't. My current rent alone is $5,000. I'm stretched thin as it is, covering my own living costs, let alone paying for a mortgage on a house I'll never return to. $5,000? You're just an ordinary employee. How could you afford such a place? Hearing my mother's astonished voice, I sighed. That's the same amount I used to give home every month. Asking such a thing now, it's clear you never really cared about me. If that's the case, I can't discuss money with you any further. I'm not your personal ATM. I could hear my mother whimpering over the phone. No, no, she repeated, her voice thinner than I had ever heard. I felt no pity. A month had passed since I left quietly, yet there was no concern over my well-being. But the mortgage, the living expenses, my rent, only money. It painfully highlighted that their interest was not in me, but in my money. That's why I hadn't felt compelled to share that I was extensively freelancing online, making far more than my father's monthly salary. The house mortgage still has 15 years left, so I was depositing $5,000 every month, including savings. It seems my mother mistook it as my father's income, given his age and years of service. Her assumption was understandable, yet she never noticed the exact amount deposited every month. A glance at my father's pay slip would have clarified the discrepancy. Ultimately, my mother didn't care about the source of the money, which is why she failed to notice when the monthly income halved, leading to a shortage and subsequent mortgage payment failures, only noticed when prompted by a notice. When the absence was finally felt, she acted in a manner so typical of her. I could only offer a faint smile. Lately, she had been indulging my sister's demands for expensive baby items, further straining their finances. But without your contributions, we can't make ends meet. Could you send some money as remittance? I've told you I can't. Why don't you ask Kristen to contribute a bit for living expenses? 
If that's not enough, maybe you should increase your part-time work. As I conveyed this, my mother's shriek pierced my ears. Kristen just had a baby. How can I work more and leave her alone with the baby? Are you suggesting Kristen should work too? How could you say such awful things? I clarified, that's not what I meant. If Kristen and Matt as a couple are going to live at mom and dad's house, then they should be contributing some amount towards the living expenses. I did the same, didn't I? And isn't Matt still working, yet you're planning to live together without contributing anything? After calmly responding to avoid provoking my mother, silence followed. Staying there just temporarily might be fine, but Kristen said she plans to live there forever, and Dad seems to think the same. So it would be better for everyone living together from now on to discuss how to handle finances and share the burden. I've already left the house, so I can't be part of that discussion. Waiting a bit for a response that never came, then I'm going to hang up now. I don't plan on contacting you guys anymore, so after I hang up, I'll block you, Dad, and Kristen's numbers. You guys can delete my contact information, too. Bye. With that, I ended the call. The last thing I heard was a bewildered ha from my mother. Before another call from my mother could come in, I quickly navigated my phone to block all three of them. After completing the settings, I took several deep breaths and moved closer to the living room window. From this 25th floor apartment, I couldn't see people outside without looking down. After leaving my family home, I moved into what's known as a high-rise apartment. In fact, my side income had significantly increased, allowing me to save in the tens of thousands every month, even after transferring $5,000 to my family. Remembering my mother, who would spend whatever money she had, I felt relieved I hadn't suggested using my savings to pay off the mortgage in full. After all, my parents wanted me out. Kristen, being heavily pregnant, couldn't possibly have moved my bed and table on her own. Someone definitely helped her. While it might have been Matt, I would like to think he wouldn't partake in moving all belongings from a lived-in room. Either way, such a significant move would have been noticed by my parents. I was the only one who went out for work today, and they were home all day. Yet they said nothing when I returned and ignored me, even as I was leaving. Whether they were persuaded by Kristen or not, it was clear my parents had a part in wanting me out. Feeling this betrayal, I decided then to give up everything and leave the house. Had I paid off the mortgage in full, the three of them would have lived comfortably in a spacious home. I could not allow that to happen, so I chose the high-rise apartment for my new home. I remember when we used to gather around the TV as a family, dreaming about living in such a place. My decision to live in a high-rise apartment out of spite turned out to be far more comfortable than expected. My chosen furniture, a space undisturbed by anyone, and the freedom to live off my earnings brought me immense satisfaction. Making my potentially struggling mother believe I was living in a luxurious home felt exhilarating. I may have bragged a bit too much about paying $5,000 in rent, but my mother never noticed. Moreover, getting along well with my neighbors on the same and adjacent floors was a delight. Contrary to my expectations of encountering boastful conversations about income or car ownership, everyone was humble, making for a pleasant living environment. Three months later, my peaceful life was disrupted as I left the office. Kristen approached me from behind. Sis, there's something I need to talk to you. Her lips trembled as she spoke, her appearance rougher than a year ago, likely due to childbirth and parenting, yet her charm remained, drawing attention from my colleagues and employees from other companies as they passed by. Sorry, but I have plans afterward. If it's about the house, talk to mom, I attempted to gently remove Kristen's hand. Her eyes began to well up with tears, on the verge of crying, drawing some cold stares from the people around. 
it would be troublesome to be seen as heartless for rejecting her harshly in public. Reluctantly, I faced Kristen and suggested heading to a cafe near the station, to which she happily agreed. Actually, I'd been having an affair. Matt found out, and now he wants a divorce. This was the statement she blurted out the moment we sat down in the cafe. It felt like something out of a drama. He had the baby's DNA tested without my knowledge. It turns out Matt isn't the father. He's furious and talking about divorce. Kristen spoke in a hushed tone, aware of the sensitivity of the topic. I didn't understand all he said, but he's refusing to give us any money, insisting on suing for compensation. You're wealthy, right? Please do something. Perhaps this is what it means to be utterly speechless. My sister cheated, so it's natural she would be sued for compensation. And of course, no one would want to pay child support for a child that isn't theirs. I couldn't comprehend the nerve of my sister coming to me for a solution. Why don't you ask the person you cheated with to pay the compensation to you? I suggested. I can't do that. It was just a fling because I found him attractive. After a few dates and finding out about the baby, I cut ties, she replied. I thought Matt would forgive me. It seemed she underestimated her own husband to a remarkable extent. Though I knew my sister was selfish, I was astonished to see she treated even her loved ones this way. Then Matt didn't forgive me at all. Instead, he said he's been hating how I acted like a princess all along, and that the pressure from our parents to have children was unbearable, terrible, isn't it? Even being blamed like this, my sister still finds a way to play the victim. I can't pay the compensation, and mom and dad say they have no money. So you have to pay it. Julia, she naively assumed it was a given that I would pay, just like she thought it was okay to throw out all my belongings, labeling them junk. I was profoundly disgusted by her sense of entitlement, that someone would always bail her out. Without hiding my revulsion, I stood up to leave, and Kristen quickly turned pale, grabbing my hand with both of hers. I understand. I'll apologize. I'm sorry for throwing out your stuff without asking. I've apologized, so we're good now, right? Please give me the money quickly. The way she tilted her head slightly, using a sweet voice, sent shivers down my spine. I shook off her hand in disgust. Are you stupid? Why should I pay for the consequences of your affair? It doesn't matter if we're sisters. I hate you. I despise you as a person. I wouldn't help you even if you begged. With that, I left the money for the coffee, which hadn't yet been served, on the table and headed for the exit, ignoring Kristen's dramatically loud crying, trying to attract attention and guilt me into returning. I informed the staff that I left the payment on the table and walked out. She probably thought her tears would make me reconsider. No matter how loudly she cried or called out for her sister in a tragic voice, I ignored her and walked away. When I saw her standing up and heading towards me, I hurried to a crowded area, not stopping to see what she might do next. After about an hour of dodging through convenience stores, bookstores, and the shopping mall around the station, and seeing no sign of Kristen, I finally let out a deep breath and headed home. Reaching my 25th floor apartment, I quickly unlocked the door and slid inside, locking it behind me. Then the intercom rang. My intercom rarely rings. I don't use delivery services much, and my neighbors usually call to make an appointment if they need something. In this apartment where solicitors are scarce, the chime ringing at such a time made my heart race. The intercom rang once, then again, with the intervals between rings getting shorter. It sounded like someone was pressing the button repeatedly, making me brace myself. The intercom monitor was pitch black. Thinking it might be malfunctioning, I leaned in closer, only to realize that the darkness was actually someone's pupils, causing me to instinctively swat it away. 
In doing so, I accidentally pressed the answer button, and immediately the voice I had been hearing echoed through. Just pay up, you ugly ah. It's my sister. Anger surged through me more than fear. I thought I had escaped, but she had found out where I live. Peering into the intercom like a scene from a horror movie, I remained silent as her insults escalated from demanding compensation for her divorce to now demanding one million dollars for the trouble she caused me. Eventually demanding my apartment, I was at a loss for words, unsure where to even begin addressing her delusions. I silently picked up the phone and called the security desk on the first floor. Even as I was on the call, through the monitor, I saw Kristen being escorted away. I confirmed that it was indeed my sister and requested that they do not let her through, apologizing repeatedly for the inconvenience while still on the phone. In the end, Kristen never pressed my apartment's intercom again. The security personnel must have handled the situation properly. From what I heard from neighbors near my family home, the house was put up for sale. Kristen and Matt continued their dispute to the point of considering a lawsuit, each unwilling to give in. However, as Kristen was clearly in the wrong, she eventually conceded once she realized the legal fees would also be included in the compensation. Ultimately, she agreed to pay Matt the amount of compensation he desired. It seems Matt submitted DNA test results to the court, proving there was no biological relation between the child and Matt, thus relieving him of any child support obligations. Kristen apparently had no savings at all, leaving the compensation payments to our parents. But due to continuous defaults on the mortgage payments, the bank foreclosed on the house. With no way to cover the mortgage due to wasteful spending and taking on Kristen's compensation, my parents were forced to sell the house and use the proceeds to pay off the mortgage. Now the family home has been sold and the four of them have moved to a cheaper apartment nearby. Despite my father's income being sufficient for a modest living, the sudden drop in their standard of living caused stress and tension among them all. Moreover, my father's salary would almost bottom out within a few days of being deposited because they would never forget what life was like when I was transferring money to them. Eventually, my mother continued her part-time job, and Kristen somehow managed to find employment again. Despite using childcare services, being caught between work, childcare, and household duties has taken a toll on her. Barely a year after giving birth, the only consolation is that Kristen's child is growing up healthy. However, I doubt they can raise her without worries. So I've had a neighbor pass on some flyers about child care support to them, meddling though it may be on my end. My consistent dedication since joining the company as a fresh graduate was recognized, and I was promoted. I am now leading a new project as a group leader. My side business is also thriving with a steady increase in income. One of my side jobs, writing a serialized article as a web writer, was so well received that it was published as a book. The knowledge I acquired and shared is not commonly found on the internet, leading to its popularity and becoming a bestseller. This success has positively impacted my other side ventures, creating a virtuous cycle of growth. Embarking on new challenges, feeling just the right amount of tiredness, and returning to my comfortable home each day brings me true happiness.